the reason I love Bitcoin so much is because I hate fiat currencies so much. Fiat currencies are programmed to debase. They're programmed to allow the global banking system to be able to lever themselves 25 to 1. Greg Foss is a former fund hedge manager with over three decades of experience in bonds, banking, and investment. He is also a staunch Bitcoin bull who has predicted that Bitcoin will become the global reserve asset and trade for two twenty million dollars per coin. In a recent interview, Foss describes the decay in the traditional finance system and declares that Bitcoin is the only viable solution to the problem. Foss explains that while fiat currencies are programmed to debase and allow the global banking system to be heavily leveraged, Bitcoin has been programmed to conserve time and energy today for consumption in the future. Welcome to Savvy Finance. This video examines some of the problems of fiat currencies in the global banking system, as explained by former fund hedge manager and trader Greg Foss. Please watch the video, share, and like. Many thanks for your continued support. One of the hottest topics concerning cryptocurrencies worldwide is the issue of regulation. Russia, the United States, India, the European Union, and many other countries are on the verge of some form of regulatory intervention for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. While many investors are worried that heavy regulation will defeat the decentralized status of blockchain-based assets, Greg Foss welcomes regulations. He explains that many giant corporations, sovereign funds, asset managers, and others are looking to invest in digital assets. However, the Wild West status of the space is discouraging and regulatory controls stop the fear and attract these big money investors. Regulation is good to the extent that it makes big money comfortable investing in that asset class, right? There's a huge amount of money that's just sitting on the sidelines right now that wants to get involved in digital assets in particular or in, in general and Bitcoin in particular. You saw the Fidelity Research Report on Bitcoin, I hope. And if you haven't, I suggest your readers go out and read that report. It's absolutely phenomenal. And Fidelity is one of the top five asset managers in the world. I promise you, when Fidelity gets involved in something, every single other asset manager in the world is looking at it as well. In order to be able to offer that product to their client or risk losing that client to Fidelity. It's just like high yield bonds in Canada. I started trading high yield bonds in Canada 25 years ago, and there was one account in Canada that bought junk bonds. Now every single account in Canada has a high yield bond sleeve just because it makes sense. You're going to see the same thing happen with digital assets and Bitcoin, and regulation is positive for that. Some banks are currently examining it very closely. Other platforms do it already and thereby are disintermediating the banks in the current here and now. Banks, top asset managers like Fidelity and well-known corporations like Apple and Visa are getting involved in Bitcoin. As a result, Foss believes individual investors should get in as soon as possible. He adds that people should not wait until the asset dips or crashes before making their moves. He suggests buying weekly or monthly until you achieve your desired target which according to Foss should be at least one Bitcoin. Nobody knows. And by the way, if you think it's going to go down and you're waiting to buy it, I see this all the time. You're too smart by a half. Just buy it on a disciplined basis. Each week, get to your target weight and your target weight has to be greater than zero. Why? Because in my 30 years, Daniela, this is the best asymmetric trade opportunity and investment opportunity I have ever seen. If you own zero, you are taking far more risk than if you have a proper portfolio allocation. And with all due respect to Peter Schiff, he is not a good risk manager because his allocation is zero. And how's that worked out for him so far? When asked about his thoughts on altcoins such as Ethereum, Cardano, and Polkadot, Foss explains that none measure up to Bitcoin. He explains that he is so bullish on Bitcoin because it has the potential to end the crisis caused by fiat currencies. Foss adds that fiat currencies are programmed to allow the global banking system to leverage themselves 25 times, which is the main cause of the high inflation we are currently experiencing. With banks in deep trouble, governments have been playing heroes by printing more money without considering the long-term repercussions of their actions. Today, those repercussions are catching up with us all, not just those that initiated the problem. Foss believes Bitcoin and not any other digital asset is the solution to this worldwide challenge. I need you to understand that the reason I love Bitcoin so much is because I hate fiat currencies 
so much. Fiat currencies are programmed to debase. They're programmed to allow the global banking system to be able to lever themselves 25 to 1 and thereby consistently get into financial crises because they are so levered. And they're therefore backstopped by the governments. The governments being able to print money can bail out the financial system. Fiat money is programmed to debase. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is 21 million fixed supply and it is programmed to conserve the value of your time and energy in today for consumption in the future. So as an engineer, I do not like fiat money and Bitcoin is the solution. None of these other digital assets have the same characteristics of Bitcoin. So that's how I just prefer to comment on why I like Bitcoin because of my distrust and distaste for fiat currencies. So we both mentioned we grew up in Montreal, right? That's so right. after I came back to Montreal from the States, I did a, a, pro, a business degree in the US. I came back to Montreal. I worked for Royal Bank of Canada, Canada's largest financial institution in 1988, Daniela. My first project working directly for the CFO was to evaluate the Royal Bank of Canada's Latin American debt portfolio or defaulted loans. Lo and behold, Royal Bank of Canada, using a very simple calculation, was insolvent. Insolvent. Canada's largest bank had a negative book value of equity if you were to write down all their Latin American debt to the trading value of the loans, which was about 25 cents on the dollar. I couldn't believe it. I had gone through six years of schooling and I come back and work at Canada's largest financial institution and realize that the fiat is a Ponzi scheme. And now, Royal Bank of Canada wasn't alone. Every single other money center bank in New York and globally was in the same situation. And that's why Treasury Secretary Nicholas Brady had to introduce in the late 80s something called the Brady Plan. And it was a brilliant solution, but it was accounting gimmickry. They didn't have to mark their loans down to market because they had built a plan that it would be backed by U.S. Treasury zero coupon bonds over a 30-year period. And it was just accounting gimmickry, and it was wise, and it was smart, and it rescued the financial system. But every single financial crisis I've gone through has been the result of fiat money. This is not the first time Foss vividly describes the rot within the banking system. In a recent tweet, he describes banking as an extremely risky business that is made safe by the government. Here's Foss' tweet. Reminder. All banks are 20 to 25 times levered to their equity base. This has not changed regardless of the removal of the Emergency Measures Act in Canada. Banking is an extremely risky business that is made safe by implied government backstops. But what if the government is a buffoon? Hashtag Bitcoin over buffoonery. In his interview, Foss explains the reason for the tweet and details how banks are deeply levered. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll address my tweet. Everybody needs to understand that a bank has equity capital as their risk absorbing capital base, and they have depositors money, both of which go into making a loan to a counterparty. For every hundred dollars of loans, there's only five or six dollars of equity approximately, and the other $94 is depositors money and subordinated debt. So if that loan, which is worth a hundred cents on the dollar, dips in value below 90 cents on the dollar, that loan in theory has blown through all of its risk absorbing equity, right? That's what happens when you're 25 times levered. 25 times is 25 times bigger deposit than your equity base. Banks are inherently risky because they are so highly levered. Now, no one understands that. And everyone says, well, I keep my money in the in the big five Canadian banks. And I'm not saying take your money out. I'm just saying understand the risks. And the risks are when you are 25 times levered or 20 times levered, if the value of the loans you've made fall by more than five cents, you're in big trouble. And that happens regularly. That's the way credit markets work. So that's why I tweeted that. Foss has unpacked a lot of important information in this interview. Looking at the issue of regulation, he is not the only top figure who believes some form of regulation would be great for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. 
Michael Saylor of MicroStrategy has also detailed some of the benefits these assets will get if the digital asset space is regulated. There is also the issue of increasing institutional adoption. BlackRock, the world's leading asset manager, plans to offer crypto trading services to its institutional clients. Fidelity, another top asset manager, is also making big moves in the space. If these big names are getting in, there is going to be a need for regulation to stabilize the market. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to drop your comments and observations in the comment section below and click the like button. Till our next video, stay savvy and safe.